I'll be honest, I've never done a soil test, but today all that is about to change. You might have heard somebody say, why bother with a soil test? My grass looks just fine. And you think it may be pointless. Maybe you're like me, and I thought it was a bit too difficult, or it was too time consuming. Well, I'm about to tell you why you need one, when is the best time to do it, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get one done. It's true that some lawns look great without ever doing a soil test. That can make it seem like it's less important than it really is, but it's essential to know the soil's quality. The soil is gonna determine your grass's health, and the results of a soil test is gonna show you what nutrients are needed for optimal growth. Also, it's gonna show you what areas may be lacking, or maybe you might be putting too much of something down and you need to stop. But without doing a soil test, you might never know if you're not using enough fertilizer or if you're overdoing it. A soil test is gonna show your pH as well. So a few months ago, I bought this little device after talking with my dad. He recommended it because it was something that I would be able to use that I could quickly check and see what my soil's pH was. I'm actually gonna take a few readings today to see if those soil samples that I pulled compares to it and see if they match up. You can do a soil test anytime during the year, but the off season, like during the fall and the winter are the best times to do a test. During this time, your grass is either going into dormancy or is there already. Also, you most likely haven't done any major fertilization recently. And that way, you're gonna see what your soil health is really like at that time without any sort of amendments that's happened recently. Then, once you get the test results, you're gonna be ready to go in the early spring. You know exactly what you need to do. Spotting stuff like pH problems or missing nutrients now means that you're able to fix them before you have to go and deal with them during the growing seasons. It's all about having a plan and you're gonna be staying ahead of the game. When I was looking at my options and doing a soil test, I knew that the local extension office would be a place where I could get it done. But when I researched on their website for more information, I found that the turnaround time was going to be at least two weeks. When you factor in the shipping of the sample and getting the results back in the mail, and plus with the holidays coming up, they said that there would be office closures. And I just didn't want to have to deal with that. It's also important for me to understand the results. So I want to look at the sample reports. I wanted something that was simple and easy to read. Now that I knew what I was getting from the local extension office, I looked for other options. I discovered my soil tests. They promise quick and simple results. Their reports are very clear. And plus, they have an online dashboard that allows you to track changes over time. So I would be able to compare my soil test each time that I got one done. I wanted to be able to see what my reports look like and be able to monitor the progress over time. The soil test kit comes in a straightforward package and it's got everything you need included. You can order it from Amazon or their website and you can get it in a couple days. You can collect your samples and then you send it in. What's nice is there's a return package label in the box already, so it makes it super easy to send it right back. You don't even need to leave your house, ever. That's really convenient. So in this kit, you're gonna notice that you have your sample number, which is gonna correspond with the results that you're gonna get back. And inside the box, the instructions are really straightforward. There's a card that's on the back that will guide you through registering your sample. It says to do this on the first step, and I recommend that. You don't wanna accidentally lose that number. Otherwise, you're gonna to need to buy another kit. Also in there is the sample container and a nice little scoop. First, I recommend wearing gloves because it can prevent any of the samples being contaminated from what might be on our hands. It's a small step, but ensures the purity of your sample. Typically, you're going to use the same fertilizer and the same soil amendments throughout your entire yard. So that's why you're going to take a few samples from various places in your yard. There is actually a tool that you can use that comes specifically with the My Soil test kit. I didn't order it because I didn't think I needed it. Probably would have been better to showcase this, but I will link it in the description below so you can actually get it if you so choose. It'll make the process a lot easier. But there are a couple different options that you have at your disposal. And I'm sure you've got at least one of these tools around. 
I'm gonna show you what you can use in the place of that specific tool for the soil test kit. First up, it's one of these. You could just dig into the ground. You wanna to try to get as deep as you can. You wanna probably get four to six inches deep. You wanna be careful not to get too much out of the ground. And then once you get the soil, try to put your grass back in place. Second of all, you can use one of these. So what this will do is create a core really quickly. As you punch it into the ground, it'll pop it up. And so you can collect a few of these right here. Um, that's exactly what you need. But of course you might have a little bit of grass like so. You wanna just get rid of that. You're really not gonna need a whole lot of these. You're gonna mix them all up anyway. This is probably the most expensive option, but it will work too. Especially if you got the four inch guard here, it'll create an entire plug into the ground and you just get the bottom off of that. You don't even have to replace the whole core that you're plugging, but I'll do it right quick. And there we go. You can take this whole bottom part of it, try to get rid of any rocks or debris or any roots in there. All you want is the soil. Look at how much clay is there. And then all we gotta do is put this thing right back. Probably don't even need this much. Probably need like half of that. Honestly, I don't know. Don't need a whole lot. So I'm gonna opt for this one to do the job. I love using this thing whenever I can, so today's the day. But now that we went over the tools, I wanna go around in my backyard. I wanna take two samples from the backyard. I wanna go here to one side and then here on the other side. And then I wanna to try to go and take about four samples from the front. Okay, now I'm gonna come right over here and do another plug from this other side of the yard. So we wanna make sure that we go around to various parts of our yard because we're only gonna do one soil test, right? So we need to mix up all the dirt from various parts of our yard. So that's why I'm getting a couple spots over here in the backyard and I'm gonna go around to the front and I'm gonna get about three or four spots there. One thing about that is I wanna make sure that I get different parts of the yard where I've got some slopes and I've got some low points. I wanna go out there and I wanna get at least one high point and one low point. Okay, now that we've got all of our dirt, I'm gonna go through it and make sure there are no rocks in it. Try to get any roots, any grass that may be in there. I wanna try to get that out. Looks pretty good to me. Kind of mix it up a little bit. I'm actually gonna pull this whole thing out. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the dirt down in here. Make it easier to sift. Now there's a rock. There's another one. We wanna get any of those rocks, any of those grass blades, roots that may have gotten into our sample. We want just soil here. So I'm gonna put it in this box here. Looks pretty clean now. Shake it up. It's pretty difficult to get that Georgia clay shook up. And now look what we've got. Still looks like little nuggets, but it'll work. So now what we're going to do is get our deionized water, deionized water. So that's what this is. Whenever you get this sample, don't pour this out. It specifically says it in the directions, but the soil is going to be put in here and that is actually what you're gonna be sending off into the mail. Also leave that little thingy in there too. 
says so in the directions. All we need is one scoop now that we've got it all mixed up from the various places all throughout the yard. And there we have it. There it is. Now it's time to package this thing up and send it off. And in a few days, we'll have our results. And now we wait. I sent my soil sample in on December 12th and it took six days for them to get it in the mail and then another day for them to return the results to me. When you log into their dashboard, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to click here to review the results. You have the ability to compare any recent results to previous ones, but I can't do that right now because this is the first one that I've done. Looking at these results, I was quite surprised because everything was on the low side. Sulfur came in quite high and I'm pretty sure that's something to do with our water or irrigation. I'm speculating right now because I couldn't find anything online that's confirming this theory. But at the top of the soil data, you can see where the pH is listed, and that's where you want to look at first. The soil pH is really going to determine how well your fertilizer is going to work, and the fact that it's in an optimal range is a good start for me. That means that I don't have to do anything additionally before I need to start putting some fertilizer out. But I think my main takeaway here is that I need to aerate more, and maybe that's why the fertilizer is not actually getting down into the ground well enough, and aeration is going to help me with that. What's really nice here is they give you recommendations on what fertilizer you need to put down based on your results. And you can see here it's recommending a 12-12-12 fertilizer. Recently, back in October, I put down a 10-10-10 product and I plan to put that down again in mid to late February. Remember, a good yard is going to start with good soil and something like a soil test should never be overlooked. And it's not that difficult either. Well, I really hope that I've inspired you to do a soil test. And if you enjoyed this video, Make sure you check out this one where I've had to rescue my lawn from a big mistake that I made and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>